DPAC is a whole package of utilities. You can get them from UCISWARE uh, directly or you can search for it on the Visual Studio Gallery. Make sure you find uh, the free version for Visual Studio 2010 and it's a productivity booster. It has a ton of capability, most of which uh, just is too much to fit into this demo. Originally started life for Delphi programmers, or, or Delphi if that's how you prefer to say it, and does provide uh, key mappings and so on that would be familiar for them. But it has a ton of capability that you're going to enjoy even if the only development tool you've ever used is Visual Studio. And let me show you some of it in action. I have a project open and I have DPAC installed in this version of Visual Studio. And uh, one of the questions that people ask all the time about projects is how many lines of code they are. And there are some fairly awkward techniques you can use to count how many lines are in a whole pile of files. Um, but you really need to use a tool that understands code to be able to distinguish between code files and uh, ancillary files, and also to distinguish between lines of code and comments. If you take a look at this um, particular function, in addition to comments, we have blank lines. We have all kinds of things going on. And the actual number of lines of code in here is fairly small. Well, the DPAC menus include this solution statistics option, which if I choose it, brings up just that information. How many files are in each of the projects in my solution? How many uh, lines are in all those files? And of those lines, how many are code and how many are comments or empty lines? It even shows me the overall ratio of comment lines to total lines. And all of these are sortable. The, the total line always stays at the top no matter what we're doing, but the rest uh, organize themselves. If you want to do more than just sorting and looking, you can export this information to a uh, comma-separated variable, CSV file. And if I flip over to my desktop, find that file. You can see I could now make little pie charts or I could maybe keep versions of this over time and, and uh, be able to give people some trending information over time if I wanted to do more than just uh, what that uh, dialogue is going to do for me. Now I mentioned I have a lot of different files here in this solution and uh, if I for some reason would like to see the structure of them, it can be kind of boring and fiddly work to be sitting around uh, collapsing individual bits and pieces, especially if there were tons of them open. Let's open up a few more to kind of sort of be more realistic. And as you know, as you edit your way around, if you have the tracking on, all these folders do open up. So one tiny little thing, again on the DPAC menu, Collapse All Projects, does just that, collapses all the projects. It's a little thing, um, but it's something that really helps me to kind of, right, I finished that task, now I'm going to start my next task. I like to collapse all my projects and kind of have a nice clean uh, solution explorer every time. Now for my next piece of what DPAC does, I'd like to switch over to a smaller project because I want you to be able to see some changes that are made to the project and that's just difficult when it's enormous and has a lot in it already. So I'm going to open up a very simple little project. It has not much going on in it other than what was done by the wizard um, it's got a, a couple of functions that have been added for reasons that have nothing to do with this demo, but they give us um, some code in order to be able to type in here. Now, you know that IntelliSense is, is a great way to kind of find your way around and guess your way through to something that you want to do. You sort of say, I want to do something with threads. What have you got? And, and sometimes you get uh, something suggested to you and other times you don't. And very often the reason why you don't get things suggested to you that you might like is because you don't have an, a reference already added to some capability. So if you're trying to use something like file I.O. that doesn't involve a new reference, IntelliSense may be able to help you out. But if it requires a new reference to be added into your project, this is not the way to find what you want. And an interesting way to find things is to use the framework browser that comes as part of DPAC. So again, if I bring up that DPAC and I choose Framework Browser, I can actually search throughout the .NET Framework uh, by starting to type a part of what's going on. So say for example I remember hearing from someone that you shouldn't hard code folder names like C program files or C users person's name, you know, uh, 
but that instead there are some variables available to you somewhere in the .NET framework for these kind of magic folders. So I might type uh, the word folder, click find, and here are a number of things throughout the .NET framework that um, have the word folder in them. Now this particular one, it's in the namespace system and it's in the assembly MS Core Lib, so really all I had to do was type environment.special folder and I would have found it. Where things get kind of interesting is if I try uh, something a little more obscure to do my searching for. So let's type speech. Now here's something called uh, speech synthesizer. This is a uh, uh, class that's not going to magically come in. It's not part of the core lib. It's not part of the system namespace on its own. In order to start to use this class, I would have to add a reference to system.speech, and I might want to add a namespace uh, using or imports, depending on C-sharp versus VB, saying uh, system.speech.synthesis. Well, if I double-click this line, that's exactly what happens to my project. All of a sudden, we have a reference added to system.speech, and we have a namespace added so that I can then just start uh, to start calling some of these functions as speak and, and, and the like. This is way better than searching the internet and then being told, here's the, uh, here's the reference you have to add, here's the, uh, the namespace you have to use. These things are changed to your project right away. So it's a very quick and powerful way to find your way around the .NET framework. Uh, as well, if I just uh, paste you can see that the actual namespace has been put into my clipboard buffer. So if I'm not a big fan of those namespace statements, I could just start in uh, working from here and say, you know, say as or whatever it is that I want to do uh, with that uh, component that I've now added into my, my application. I'm going to switch projects once again. I'm opening up deliberately a project of Visual Basic. I'm just going to put put some code here, basically just so that I have something to work with. And what I'd like to be able to do is uh, the sorts of things that we do all the time in long and complicated apps. You've got three, four, five lines of code, and you're like, oh, this should be in an if. This should be in a try-catch. Now, uh, refactoring is available to a certain extent in C-sharp, and you can certainly uh, go out and buy tools that offer you amazingly powerful refactoring. But uh, one of the things that Deepak offers is some very simple refactoring. So if I select this single line of code and right-click it, I can choose Surround With, and let's say Try-catch. And presto, I have my try-catch around my message box call. It works around any number of lines of code. Let's just wrap this whole thing in some sort of if-else. And uh, there we go. You still have to now fill in the conditions, but a lot of the work has been uh, the indenting and the fiddling and the wait, how many lines down do I have to go to add the corresponding end statement has been taken care of for you. Uh, this is not the entirety of all the refactoring work you would ever want to do, but for most of us, surround with is the most important of all the refactoring work we'd want to do, and if you're going to install Deepak for its other capabilities, it's cool to know that it also has surround with. It also has an awful lot more that there just isn't time for in a demo of this length, so I encourage you to take a look around it and uh, explore what it can offer you in terms of understanding your code and of writing your code in a more productive and, and uh, enjoyable way.